that's a lie because now we know that's a lie. Gosh, I feel like Mari Povich. And the lie detector test determined that was a lie. Detector test determined that was a lie. You just gotta do you, boo. Ow. Hello, my loves, and welcome back to my channel. If this background looks a little bit familiar to you, that's because you've probably seen this background in the past. If you are an OG subscriber of the Fancy Hair Tutorials channel, you may or may not have remembered this bed in the background. It's a very controversial bed because many of you thought that I was using a green screen, that this bed wasn't real, but I assure you, this bed is real. So I hope that I nipped any of your questions in the bud and we can move forward with our lives, shall we? On another more important note, these earrings are kind of making me feel some kind of way. I'm really digging it and it's giving me a little bit of sassiness today, which I'm not gonna lie. I don't mind. All right, so if you clicked on this video, you clicked on it because you are curious to know the lies that the hair industry is telling us and doesn't want us to know. Today, I'm gonna to be debunking a bunch of myths and a bunch of lies that have been circulating throughout the hair industry. That way you can make better decisions for yourself and potentially save a lot of money. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. All right, so the first lie that I want to talk about is a lie that I'm pretty sure almost every single hair brand out there has tried to create a product for to cure. And that's curing or fixing split or dead ends. I'm sorry to tell you, but no matter what you're going to put on your hair, it's not going to repair split ends or dead ends. Once your hair is split or dead, no bueno. The only way you're ever gonna be able to actually fix it is to snip them off. There are some products out there that will temporarily seal your split ends, meaning it's going to take your two split ends and stick them together and make it look like it's fixed, but once you wash your hair, those split ends are just going to pop right up. And if you're very familiar with hair, you'll know that there's no such thing as one type of split end or dead end. Split ends and dead ends come in all shapes and forms and sizes. They're not always split into two. Sometimes they're fraying in like 10 billion different directions, look like little caterpillars. Sometimes the dead ends have multiple points of breakage. So it's not always that simple. So please do not fall for those gimmicky ads or marketing campaigns because the fact of the matter is you cannot fix split or dead ends unless you cut them off. The next lie that the hair industry has been feeding you and doesn't want you to know is that damaged hair can be repaired. Now, it is true to a certain extent, you can make your damaged hair temporarily look healthier by applying a bunch of silicones and oils and serums to it. But at the end of the day, after you wash your hair, it's going to go back to its damaged state. The only way you can truly, truly undamage your hair is by growing out your natural hair and try to apply as little heat as possible to your hair and also use hair products that are as natural as possible. It took me such a long time to grow out my hair and have it be healthy. If you guys have been watching me from the very beginning, you probably have seen how thin and brittle and dry and damaged my hair was. I was bleaching it all the time. I was wearing my hair extensions every single day. I wasn't taking care of my hair. I wasn't reading of the labels on the products that I was putting on my hair. And you could really tell. So don't expect those products to work miracles on your hair. Hair products that are catered towards damaged hair, they will help a little bit temporarily, but they're not a miracle worker. The next lie is something that I have come to terms with pretty recently, in fact, and it was extremely, extremely disappointing because I realized that I wasted a lot of my money. If something is labeled organic, it is better for you. This is a huge misconception because the FDA does not approve a lot of the ingredients that are labeled organic. For something to be truly organic, it needs to be certified organic. So please read the labels. Do not just read the title. And if it has organic in the title, automatically assume that a product is organic because chances are it might not be. I always, always, always read the back 
of the labels on every single thing that I buy, whether I'm putting it on my skin, on my hair, or I'm eating it, because I want to know what are in the products that I'm buying or what's in the food that I'm consuming. Because in today's world, it's just so easy to get caught up in all of these things and kind of fall for catchy commercials or advertisements or pretty packaging. Always, always, always read the labels. Thank you so much. The next myth or lie is something that boggles my mind. Every time I think about this, I think, wow, we've been so brainwashed. And that's the lie that men and women should be using separate products. It doesn't matter whether you are a man or you are a woman or anything in between. If you have skin, if you have hair, any kind of skin or hair product is for you. You just have to figure out your skin type and your hair type and just go for the products that work best for your skin type and your hair type. If you have dry hair, go for products that are tailored for dry hair. And same thing goes for skincare. Same thing goes for anything. There's absolutely no rules. And this is a lie that actually annoys the crap out of me because a product that does the same thing that's tailored for a woman and one is tailored for a man, the one for the woman is going to be priced more than the one that's made for the man. So where's the logic in there? I don't know. It's pretty much straight up bullshit. So you do you. Another lie that the hair industry loves to talk about is that you should be using a shampoo and conditioner from the exact same brand. The only reason why they do that is because of course they want to make more money on you and that's an easy way of doing it. Why buy one product when you think you need to buy two to get the full results, right? I personally only buy shampoo. I don't even buy conditioner anymore. I just buy a deep conditioner and I never use a deep conditioner from the same brand. I use products that are specifically targeted for my hair type and for my skin type on my scalp, of course. So I personally have a super dry scalp and I have very dry hair. So I use a natural shampoo on my scalp that neutralizes the pH balance because my scalp, when it's overly dry, it tends to flake and neutralizing the pH balance tends to help me out with that. And I use a separate deep conditioner on the rest of my hair to really give my hair that moisture that it is lacking. So don't ever feel that you need to buy buy a shampoo and conditioner from the same brand just because the brand is advertising to you that you need to. Because now we know that's a lie. Gosh, I feel like Mari Povich. And the lie detector test determined that was a lie. The next lie is something that I see very, very frequently. People assume that if a product is more expensive, it is automatically better. And that is so far from the truth. Sometimes you can spend two or $300 on a super bougie expensive hair mask or whatever. And then you can find a $12 hair mask at the drugstore or maybe at the health food store that performs way, way better. And you wanna know why that is? That's because these super bougie expensive products go under a lot less testing than more mainstream ones. That's because they usually contain really rare ingredients in them. So they're not proven to work. They're all just theories. Basically these companies that are trying to sell you a super, super expensive hair product without being able to back up their claims are hoping that you're gonna be wooed by the fancy labeling and the super high price tag and going to fall for their lies. Now, I'm not saying that all expensive products are alike. There are some really expensive products out there that work wonders, but you just have to do your research and you have to know what works for your skin type and for your hair type. One of the things that I love to do is go into a department store such as Nordstrom because they have a super generous sampling policy. You can go in there and sample pretty much any kind of product under the sun for free. You can come back for more samples later on if if you feel like the first sample that you tried out was not sufficient enough for you to decide whether or not it's a product that will work for you. So just drop in, get a sample, try it out, see if you like it better than let's say a less expensive counterpart before actually plunking down a ton of cash for it. Another lie that has been marketed for so many years is that you should be shampooing your hair before conditioning. There's absolutely no rules in what order you should do this in. Actually, 
I found that for my hair type, I like to condition my hair before applying shampoo. That's because the conditioner keeps my hair moisturized. It gives it all the nutrients that it needs to be healthy. And that way my locks are saturated with all of that goodness. Shampoos are really cleansers or detergents. You do not need to be applying shampoo to all of your hair anyway. So that's why I like to apply the conditioner first and I apply it from about here all the way down to my ends. And then I apply shampoo to my scalp only. And I really think that has really played a huge part in keeping my hair nice and soft, healthy, and touchable. In fact, talking about my hair care routine, I have changed it up quite a bit recently and I figured out a cool little trick to make my hair really soft and healthy and manageable. I don't know if you guys want to see an updated hair care routine, but if you do, please make sure to let me know in the comments below and I would be more than happy to do that for you. Okay, these next two lies have to do with hair extensions. So the first one that I've heard so many times is that clip-in hair extensions are worse or less superior to other types of hair extensions. Now, I'm not just saying this because I have a clip-in hair extension company, but actually one of the main reasons why I decided to manufacture my own clip-in hair extensions is because I did a lot of research and I've also myself tried out a ton of different hair extensions from sew-in to fusion and all of that kind of stuff. And I can honestly say from my personal experience and from my in-depth research that clip-in hair extensions are the best and safest type of hair extensions on the market. They are the least damaging on the hair. They can also be styled into any type of different hairstyle, whether you want to do a ponytail or a top knot, low bun, braid, whatever it is, they can be maneuvered and manipulated all over your head without any damage. As long as you don't abuse them and wear them 24 seven with you in the shower or in your bed, they will not damage your hair. If you have something clinging to your roots and constantly putting weight on your roots for a long period of time, it's going to loosen your hair follicles and eventually your hair is going to become weaker and fall out or break. So that's why I always advise people against any other type of hair extensions. And if you are interested in hair extensions that are safe for your hair, clip-in hair extensions are the way to go. The next hair industry lie that has been popping up in the hair community for the last few months now is this whole thing about seamless hair extensions. So for those of you who don't know, high quality clip-in hair extensions have a reinforced weft at the top. It's either reinforced with a ribbon or lace. Usually the ones that are worse quality are not reinforced with this ribbon or lace at all. Fancy hair extensions, for example, are reinforced with a lace ribbon and the wefts are super thin and compact. So now a bunch of hair extension companies are coming out with seamless clip-in hair extensions. So instead of having a ribbon reinforcement or a lace reinforcement, they're reinforcing their wefts with silicone. Now, the reason why I say that this is a hair industry lie is because seamless hair extensions are not that much thinner than a good high quality set of clip-in hair extensions that are reinforced with lace or ribbon. If your hair extensions are really high quality and sewn really, really well, they will stay compact and thin and they will not be bulging against your scalp. I would also be super, super careful with these silicone reinforcements because there are a bunch of other chemicals inside of that reinforcement. And because it's right up against your scalp, there could be a lot of toxins that could be absorbed into your skin and go into your bloodstream. So before you fall for the hype, I would highly recommend to do a lot of research on these types of hair extensions because they've only been around for a very short amount of time and there's absolutely no research on their safety. The next lie I see not as frequently, but it's out there, is that the more hair product you apply to your hair, the better the results. So obviously this depends on what kind of hair products you are using, but in general, if you are using shampoo or conditioner, you really don't need that much. For shampoo, especially if you're just applying shampoo to your scalp only, you really don't need need much more than a quarter size depending on how thick your hair is and for shampoo you also don't need much more than about a dollar a lot of hair brands don't really 
educate their customers about this because obviously the more that you use, the better it is for them because the sooner you run out of product, the sooner you're gonna go buy some more. And of course, all of these brands want to make more money. So why are they going to tell you about this? That's what I'm here for. This is especially true when it comes to using serums or oils. If you use too much, it's common sense that it's going to weigh your hair down and make your hair look greasy. You're gonna ruin your hairstyle. Same thing goes with something like dry shampoo, especially if it has a white cast. Woo, girl, go easy on that stuff. Don't always assume that applying more of a hair product is better because it's not. And the last lie that the hair industry doesn't want you to know is something that has also boggled my mind. I don't understand how we as a society, as women have come to this place where we are believing all of this garbage, Jesus. Lighter hair in the summer, darker hair in the winter, girl, Come on, I know that's a huge lie. You should know that is a huge lie. I'm sure you know that's a huge lie. So why are you listening to all of these people? If you like your hair light, keep it light. Keep it light for as long as you want. There are no rules. If you like your hair dark, keep it dark. Keep it dark for as long as you want. If you have a red hair or if you dyed your hair red or blue or green or pink or purple, it doesn't matter. There's absolutely no rules, no seasons. You do you. If you love rocking bleach blonde hair in January, you do you, girl. And if you like rocking pitch black hair in the middle of August, you do you, girl. There is absolutely no reason to change up your hair color for any reason, let alone season, month, lunar eclipse, or anything else. The only reason you should be changing your hair color is if you want to. Okay, guys, so that wraps up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know what was your favorite lie that I mentioned in this video. Did something I say shock you or bring something to your attention? Did you already know all of these lies? I'm very, very curious to know. And before you go, I wanted to remind you that I do have a second channel where I do a bunch of makeup DIYs, makeup tutorials, beauty hacks, skincare stuff. So if you're interested in all that good stuff like I am, feel free to click the link above my head. It will take you right on over to my second channel and you can subscribe and be notified every time I have a new video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new, please be sure to subscribe. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.